What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Run It Up, Run Up Hangout today with my good friend, Dan Smith. What's Thanks for having on? me. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here. I've heard you've been kind of busy in the last few weeks. It's been a pretty good week for me. Yeah? So, uh, in case you guys don't know, Dan Smith, over the last, what is it, like a week ago now about? I have only four days. Only four days. It's barely set in. Mm. The newest World Poker Tour champion mm. here at Bellagio. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I've had like a great year and the year before but compared to any of those like this really felt real right when you play 100k you go in like this is just like pretend money i'm just gonna go <laughs> in and like huh? like just try to play the best i can and you're like you're desensif like desensitized right ten thousand dollars is like a real sum of money and like a hundred <laughs> buy-ins like huh? i can like fathom that right right i mean it's crazy you won like what 1.1 1. 1, 1. 1.2 million something like 1. that 1.1 1, yeah oh no big deal another just 1.1 1. 1. that's that's great it's your biggest score of your career second second biggest you had just one that was a little bit bigger you won a Barcelona. high roller right that was the uh, 100k or 25k it was 50k euro okay nice Oh, that must have been fun, too. Yeah, I, this was even more fun. <laughs> so so uh, tell me a little bit about how the tournament went for you. Like, was it, was it, I mean, I followed up till about day five, and then I kind of got lost in the shuffle. But, like, how was the final table for you? What, what happened? Tell me the story. Well, on day two, I busted uh, my first bullet. My, nice. I got the, I re-enter. I see that I'm 223. My birthday is February 23rd. Oh, so my I, God. I mean, I'm always saying that I'm going to win, but I, I did call it this time. I double <laughs> up on my first hand of the second bullet. Oh, nice. Um, as we get into the money, I started to run up a stack. You busted uh, my roommate, actually, with uh, jacks against your aces. He, uh, <laughs> um, so at least he assisted you out there. Who's your roommate? Alex. Vanessa? Oh, yeah. 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 So he he told me that story. I was like, ah, oh, hopefully he wins. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you put a stack together. You went, went obviously, in the money. and uh, I was like kind of coasting. And then um, with the final two tables left, I just couldn't win a pot. I was down to like 30 big blinds. I three bet Zugwatt with tens. He four bets shoved, and honestly, the way he shoved, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> like th this is a problem. Huh? And like, I'm never the person to do this. I'm like, is there any way I could three bet fold? And I'm like, I, I just have to stick it in. Right. He is kings. I slam out the ten on the river. No big deal. <laughs> um, that was pretty huge. I was like actually doing the like walk out the door to jump in the hundred k thing. Like oh, I was up and had a. Uh, that was a good-looking 100K, though, for what it's worth. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty good-looking... Slightly good unfortunate that I missed it. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> I guess I guess he'll pass it up. Uh, so you make the final table. You were oh. a chip leader when you made the final table. With, like, 11 left, like, I ran up a stack, and I just started winning a bunch of pots. And then when we get to the 10-handed table, I just went on a rampage. Like, nice, nice. The I King Dan rampage <laughs> machine. I love it. I won, huh? like, I think six hands in a row at one point, and it was nice. just, like, I was just... People really were trying to make the six-handed table and the s chips roll in the right place. Right. Um, I had Gary Benson, who was second in chips on my left, but he told me that he didn't want to play pots with me. <laughs> like, actually told you. <laughs> he three-bet me once. I'm raising every hand. Yeah. He three-bets me once. I make a joke like, oh, I got to let the five-six suited go, and he just flashes me kings. Like, <laughs> we're not playing pots. Oh, right, <laughs> I'm like, right. okay, if, if you want to, yeah. we don't have to. Okay, that's fine with you, obviously. Yeah. So at this point, you make the final <laughs> table. You make the final six. Do you feel nervous at this point in your career, or do you feel like, you know, I got this? I think one of my strengths is that, like, I don't get very nervous. or like I, ha I think when the money gets big, I play my best. Before the table, like, especially, they were trying to get me to go in, like, four hours early right. i decided to be a little bit difficult and only show up like two hours early <laughs> okay i wanted to like yeah. kind of work out in but um well i mean those days are pretty i mean i know bellagio has long you know a long tournament and a lot of like shorter days typically speaking yeah. but still you know if you're playing for a million dollars you don't want to show up four hours early if you can yeah, be sleeping um, or whatever I, I really wanted to like help them with their tv show and i did the interview but like i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna get my food like i'm gonna be ready to play right um I mean, you got to. You only have like what? How many opportunities in your in the decade to make this into this is such, a score? I, so. I didn't actually look at my ICM beforehand, but it was some massive number. Um, yeah. I, I was actually very slightly anxious, which is unusual for me before I play. Hmm. I felt it before the NBC heads up, just because I was going to be on NBC. And, like, right, right. But um, this, I, but I just like. I was confident in the fact, like, well, there's no way anyone else feels this good. So even though I feel a little bit anxious, <laughs> right. like... You're a 2 out of 10, certainly yeah. crushes the rest of the field. <laughs> so that's great. So what happened to the actual final table? I actually haven't seen... I've only seen a couple of the hands. Um, I, early on, I raised the button with ace-jack. Uh, Joe shoved the big blind for, like, 20 bigs with queen-10 off. Okay. Uh, I knock so, him out. Nice. I'm, I was running quite well up until, like, three-handed, and then I went... Um, I was just losing every pot... 
I got down to like 20 big blinds. Um, open limp the button by Benson. Small blind raises to four and a half. Um, it's Eddie Sabat. Okay, yep. And I have uh, ace 10 off in the big. Okay. I shove. He has eights. I hit the ace on the turn. Nice. And then I, <laughs> the next orbit, he limps small blind. I raise jack six suited. Flop a flush. Nice. And go bet, bet, shove, and then I had, like... He calls River? Yeah. Oh, nice. He made a comment about how he knew, like, oh, you can't be bluffing here, and then called. He was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's awesome. So you made it down the heads up, obviously. And I had, like, I had him, like, nine to one or not maybe, like, seven to one. Right. And then... And King Dan doesn't lose seven to one chip <laughs> Let's be real, people. Yeah, he <laughs> just folded a few hands, and then he was down to five big blinds, shoves fours. I have King Ten. That's it. I don't lose flips. <laughs> That's awesome. So how would you compare like winning the World Poker Tour event to winning like the other events you've won in your career? I mean, was it something that did it did it mean something to you to win a, a World Poker Tour title? It really did. Um like I said, the other tournaments didn't feel as real. Like I, I haven't really played like six it was I don't remember if it was six or seven days. That's a long time to commit to a tournament. Oh yeah. All of my like my friends were like either railing online or like people were very interested and in right. it, it just felt much more real than everything else. Like, especially, I've been having a really rough years poker-wise, and it, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a losing year. And like, oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> just barely, no thank you. So, you know, if, if you don't know at home, you know, Dan, your career has been amazing. Like, the very first tournament that you played, you just won. A Heartland Poker Tour event a long time ago. Is that true? Um, or, like, the, I, for, your first cash is a It win. was my first ever cash. I played, at like, a few, like, $300 tournaments at Turning Stone. Right. But I didn't even want to go to that Heartland Poker Tour event, by the way. I was living with uh, Chewy and Zugwad in right. a beach house in Jersey. And I told him I would drive. And then, like, a couple days before, I'm like, yo, I'm not doing it. Like, you can just take my car. And they're like, no, you said you would drive. We're going. And I'm like, fine. <laughs> Somehow I don't swap <laughs> with any of them and just have 100% and just, just scoop it, it up. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. How did you get into poker originally? Like, what was your first exposure to the game? Uh, when I was a kid, I was a very good chess player. Not surprised. And, like, my freshman year of high school, I saw it on TV and I started, like, playing some uh, play money and then, uh, like, uh, some home games. And then after like a couple years of that, I'm just like, I ended up depositing $25 to get a bonus and ran it up a bit and just like, wow, you can actually make real. Ran it up a little bit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what a place to talk about running it up. That's it. So yeah, so you ran it up a little bit. <laughs> and then huh? at that point, I'm like, huh. Like then by the time I was like a senior in high school, I'm like, well, I, I've won, like I'm going to be paying for my own college tuition now. And like, All right. and then, um, so and you had and, even, you had success even in high school before you even really left yeah. high school. Yeah. Um, I, I forget if it was my sophomore or junior year. I ended up like driving to Turning Stone under eight, or my friends drove, and yeah. I played like a twelve-hour two-five session. And nice. <laughs> it probably wasn't the greatest idea, but it was fun. You know what? We look back, I think, because we both have those kind of like eh, I don't know if it was the <laughs> healthiest thing to do, but it was good. It worked out. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> at least, at least that's good. So yeah. So you were you always a tournament player? You played obviously a little bit of cash at least. But... I've played a, actually like quite a bit of cash uh in my career on uh, the past few months actually i've mostly been playing zoom online when i haven't been playing tournaments interesting um so you moved overseas obviously if you're playing online a little bit i spend most of my time in toronto how do you like the city um aside from the cold i like it it's not like the greatest party city but i'm more boring these days than i used to be anyway and i could always come to vegas if i need to uh get wild right i don't know if it was the last time you were in vegas but one of the last times you were in vegas we went to ufc i think it was 160 maybe that was Silva. when silver lost yeah silver versus weidman won and yeah. the rematch is in like a week from now i'm yeah. actually like really excited about this fight are you uh following up with the ufc at all yeah you? um yeah I don't want to bet on it because, like, I know probably just enough to, like, be a fish. Right. But, man, I, I think Silva's just going to destroy him. Oh, I cannot <laughs> wait for that fight. I mean, it was such a – I was trying to describe the before to somebody that watching Anderson fight, it was, like, bizarre. People, like, didn't know how to react. Everyone was just like, oh, my it's, God, what is he doing? It's like the world is in, like, slow motion for him. Right. It's – it's incredible. And, you know, Ronda and Misha also fighting as a co-main event is, is just absurd. That'll be entertaining. So have you always been a, a UFC fan? Like, I know we went to, the, it was the first event that you had ever went to when we went back yeah. in the summer. But uh, have you always been into UFC? Uh, some of my friends were into it. Um, and it just, it would be, it's been on enough that uh, I've gotten into it. And I, I'm not like a huge fan. Like, I prefer like 
a few of the major sports, but right, whenever right. there's a big card, I'll make a point to watch it. Nice. That's that's awesome. So when, when Chewie was on, we talked a lot about the stuff he did outside of <coughs> poker, that he had got very <coughs> much into personal health and well-being, that he had got into rock climbing and a couple of cool things like that. What are you doing outside of poker these days? In the last year, I've gotten into weightlifting and yoga. Oh, really? Um, yep. I've found that going out and like either eating like a clean meal or going to the gym is a better way to prepare than like go getting blackout drunk the <laughs> night before a tournament. Really? Yeah. Interesting theory. <laughs> um, it just also, I try to make a point to have uh, goals that I could achieve outside of poker. If poker is the only thing controlling your happiness, right. when you play tournaments, you're very frequently going to be upset. Right. But then if you're breaking like your like overhead press PR or like I can touch my toes now and right, right, right. various things that nice. like make you feel good. Nice. Did you get into yoga because of Chewy or is that just kind of a thing that happened to be like a coincidence? Um, my friend's girlfriend in Toronto, uh, Donnie's my friend and the girlfriend is Stephanie. Uh, she was, uh, she was into it and I went with her a couple times. I'm like, Oh, this actually feels great. Like I can't just meditate the whole time. I'm thinking like, okay, turn off your brain now. Oh, shit, that was a thought. <laughs> but, like, when I'm really exhausted, I can just turn off my brain, and it's, like, a really comforting thing. Nice. When, when I play poker, it's usually, like, like even when it's over, like, I'm analyzing all the situations. Right. Like, should I pull the trigger, or was the timing strong, or this, or that? Constantly. I think it's actually a, a very, a lot of the elite pros, I think, are, like, constantly reevaluating, like, what they did and everything. So it's very hard to turn that off, I find. You can't just go from, like, well, I can go from intense concentration to, like, nothing in, like, an hour and a half. Right. Um, maybe, like, someone who's more zen like Chewy is capable of it, but <laughs> right. not me. Right, right. So uh, so what are your plans for next year? Like, you have a lot of poker on the mind, or how are you That going? is an excellent question, Thank and you. I am not yet prepared to, <laughs> uh, to deal with the plans. <laughs> okay. I want to go to Australia. I haven't decided if I... With all of these, like, super high-stakes tournaments... It's just so easy to just be like, oh, I have to go here, I have to go here, and right. I mean, I don't think edges are that small in these tournaments. Uh, so when you have like whatever you're winning in like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar tournament, that becomes like a must, right. a must visit trip. Um, right. So you've obviously played in that tournament a couple times before now. That quarter million dollar buy. I, don't, I played once. You played only once, but you played the hundred k a couple times. Yeah. I mean, and those tournaments are obviously amazing down there. Yeah, and honestly, I find the high rollers more fun. Like, the small fields mean you get to, like, experience all aspects of the tournament. Right. For the most, like, when you play a 1500 in the World Series, I just don't really like the vibe. If you raise someone's big blind three times in a row, he starts being mean to you. And, like, <laughs> yo, just start three-betting me. Let's go. Oh, right, right. But, uh, <laughs> no one wins those little field, little buy-in <laughs> tournaments anyway. Only fish win those. So don't worry about it. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so you, you've done pretty well in, in Australia Lifetime, haven't you, though? I won the 100K a couple years ago. Oh, no big deal. Well, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had done something down there. So, I mean, what was that like a couple years ago? Was it better back then? Like, how has the game evolved in Australia in the last few years in terms of, like, field toughness? and stuff like that i thought australia was a little bit behind the times also there were just certain people who um like they were playing like super high stakes all night and right just not focused on the tournament and what they had a 30 second shot clock i think that's really favorable to me right well, um, just because you've got so much more experience in making those decisions right yeah and even though i sometimes play slowly i very frequently like come to like what I think is my decision first, and then I like try to like break into other like deeper point like or like get more precise on bet sizing or whatever. But I tend to make my decisions pretty pretty quickly. What do you mean when you say that they think that they're a little bit behind the times? Is that in terms of like poker theory? Is it just that there aren't a lot of poker like I don't know? Is there a big po Australian poker forums? Is it that kind of thing? I mean, my, I'm, my theory is it's just so far from like everything else. Like, right. even with like the internet, it's kind of hard for information to travel. Right. There's less to be, uh, be played out there, and I'm, I would think poker's newer to Australia than it is to, like, North America. Right. That makes sense. Do you, do you feel, like, regionally speaking, that, that, that there are, like, different places? Like, is Europe now, like, the toughest place to play? Is it now because they've played the most since America has been shut off? How do you feel about that? I flip-flopped a few times. I used to think, like, the Europeans were, like, it would be easier to play. The mis when they're even they're making mistakes, they're not necessarily like the easy kind of mistakes. Like right. sometimes in Vegas, these guys they just love to fold. So the easy adjustment of just raising every hand. Like, right, right. Whereas in Europe, you feel like they're so aggressive. That 
Yeah, they're if you're raising a lot, they're just gonna start three and then five and <laughs> right. some some wild stuff's gonna happen. Is there is there any hand that, that you can think of in either maybe not the the Lager tournament, but any tournament you can think of in the last in this even calendar year that you can think of and was like, wow, that was a sick, amazing hand that I played or something that like do you think about hands in that way? Do you think about hands that were like awesome, either huge stakes or big bluff or something that was significant in some way? I do have some sweet bluffs, but um, since it's most recent, I had a hand where I opened the hijack under the, uh, yeah. or five-handed, I opened first to act. Okay. Um, where is I, this? In the Bellagio. In Bellagio, okay. Um, I believe I opened to 90,000 at 2040. Okay. The small blind is uh, Eddie Sabat. He uh, has like a bit over 2 million in calls. And this is with five left? Yes. Okay. The short to act is uh barry the cash game player from florida who i think it plays well and he certainly has some moves in his arsenal okay he makes it 270 and he only started with a million Did you say your hand i have ace queen the base queen and okay. i think i'm supposed to stack off here okay yeah and the senses were no good for it and i end up <laughs> uh i just call okay i like how you said that the senses were no good for it it doesn't feel good <laughs> I, I really thought i thought um the way he put out the chips, I, I, I was worried. Okay. So. But I think my hand's too good to fold and right. still in position. Right. So I called, and then the small blind back raised, and then big blind ripped. And I'm like, well, now I feel better about and only calling here. Yeah. And you it only was, lost a quarter million or whatever. And it was kings and a big blind at ace king. Wow, nice. And also, if he just rips, I ISO. Right. And, and it's a disaster. And then I lose, like... I'm down to like 1.5 million or something. Damn, nice. Yes, um, so that w that was awesome. Sometimes dodging those dodging those bullets is like what makes the entire difference of the tournament. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's I, made, I made a few like pretty like unusual folds for me, and I I'm sure I was like running good both like situationally, but I I thought like uh, where I was and I was like especially on point for like where I was in the hand, like I. I feel like I lost the minimum in a couple situations. It's, nice. Yeah. It's the best you can do in a lot of a lot of cases. Yeah. Do you uh do you feel like there are if there were if I told you like if I if I asked you who you thought were like your three the the three opponents you feared the most in tournament poker, do you think there are three there are three guys that you could think of and be like, all right, if I could veto having them at my table for the next year, who would those three guys be? I've played against uh, Ivy when he's just been like running the table. Yeah. I've heard some people like that have varied opinions of him. Like some, some like question his fundamentals, and in some cases they might have some vol uh, valid complaints. But when I played that two fifty k two years ago, he was just winning like more pots than I've ever seen another player win. Like he was wow. flatting opens with like five six five six off on the button, and like just with the intention of outplaying people. Hmm. He was kind of picking spots. Like there were a few guys he was slightly avoiding. I was playing tight and opening big, so he like wasn't going out his way to play with me as much. But All right. I think he's someone like when the money gets big, he's just gonna do well. I think he's super tough. Um, the Germans, I'm, I, I don't want to single anyone out, but they're all <laughs> those Germans are so <laughs> sick, man. They just get it done. I, yeah. I think I think Phil Board is <clears throat> amazing and hilarious, by the way. I really like him. He's super entertaining, and yeah. huh? he he also like knows like who he can needle and who he can't. Like right, <laughs> he busted me in the um. 10k high roller uh this year in um in berlin and i just been super card dead all day i've been playing tight i end up cold four bet shoving sixes into his tens when he three bets the small blind and, he, and i'm not gonna do a german accent because it's so bad he's like you're waiting all day and you're only waiting for sixes and then i found that very funny and i think he knew his audience and right 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 he is hilarious. He once he once raised he once raised the button against me, and I defended like ten nine in the small in the in the big blind, and it came like came like king nine deuce. He bet turn was like a, a six. He bet again. I called river was like a three, and he bet again with jack nine. So he had me one pipped and bet three times for value correctly. And after he bet the river, he winks at me <laughs> <laughs> before I made a decision. I was like, what does this mean? What do I do against a wink? I've been winking at people a lot this year, just when yeah? they're grilling me. Like, okay, it's time for this. To stop you just wink <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty hilarious so uh i i was thinking maybe you want to play a little bit of uh, heads up rock'em sock'em robots only if i could be blue you can definitely be blue let's bring that bad boy over here All right. oh. you can definitely be blue you can get some revenge on lucky cheerio over here you know who uh, assembled this for me by the way 
the one and only Martin the Hitman Campman. That, so that's could, a brag. I couldn't figure it out, but he was like, oh, I'll show you, and then did it. It was great. Hmm. All right. You want to do, do a practice round? I think we should do a practice round. All right. Is this a one, two, three, go situation? I think this is a one, two, three, go All situation. Right. Uh, so, see, one of the questions I have is that how do you line it up? So I think they've got to be knuckle to knuckle to be most fair. Yeah. All right. So we'll do like one, two, three, go. Yep. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Right hand, the right hand's all I needed. <laughs> huh? All right. You want to do you want to do best of three for a hundo? Yeah, I like this idea. All right. All right. Let's see if we can do this. Ready? You want to count down? Sure. All right. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. Right on through at the right. Are you sure you haven't played this before? I only played against Chewie. That was it. <laughs> I've actually been secretly practicing for months now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it starts with 100. That's right. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. I'll let you count down again. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, I think, you, you, I think you knew I was going to pick blue. And you had it rigged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, oh, there you go. It was a tie, kind of, sort of. So this was awesome. What's your uh, Twitter, Dan Smith? Dan Smith Holla. Dan Smith Holla. That's right. It's really hard to make usernames that have, like, Dan or Dan Smith. Like, it's a pretty common name. Yeah, right. It's got to be difficult. Mm. King Dan Smith Holla, something like that. <laughs> so if you enjoyed having Dan on the show, tweet at Dan Smith Holla and say, hey, thanks for coming on Run It Up. It was awesome having him here. We'll be back with more very soon. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. Nice. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was great. I would have rather I didn't get shut out in, in robots. <laughs>